The Holy Grail, regarded as mankind's greatest conquest in both history and fiction. In collecting terms, we refer to as a Holy Grail item as something that is just beyond our reach, or maybe something that we would never dream we'd actually be able to find. Yeah, I found one in this episode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my November update for my NES Complete Collection Chronicles. Hey everybody, this is Michael B. The Game Genie, and thank you very much for joining me for my November update to my NES Complete Collection Chronicles. It's been a while since I've done one of these, so let me get right to it and show you what I've picked up. So these first couple games came from actually a very good friend of mine that's a local guy here. I met actually at the flea market at uh, my good friend Adam and Justin's table uh, for console culture. His name is Paul and uh, we got to talking about my collection and he said hey I may have a couple games that you actually don't have. So I assumed that he probably wanted to trade or do something of that nature when in fact what he actually wanted to do was actually just give me the games which I thought was extremely extremely cool. So thank you so much Paul. Let me show you what he gave me. F-15 Strike Eagle. Now this is a very interesting game. It's not my cup of tea because it does a first person perspective on uh, airplane combat and I always get so confused with these. Like the only one I really like was Afterburner. This one it's very hard to tell where you are on the screen but otherwise it's an interesting game to add to the collection. There's some really bad graphics too at times like Atari level graphics when they try to do uh, giant sized sculptures of different things. Uh, there's no other way I can explain it. F-15 Strike Eagle. Next up is another air combat game by the exact same company Microprobe and that is F-117A Stealth Fighter. Now while this game has actually some pretty decent music and a really cool intro screen it's not the best game on the system. If you take a look at the gameplay it's very similar to the last game. Pretty much a carbon copy except this time you're in a stealth fighter. Funny thing was the last game I actually felt like I was accomplishing something while playing this game I didn't feel like I was accomplishing anything. Next up is Star Voyager by my, probably my least favorite company Acclaim. Funny thing is this was actually produced by ASCII Asai who are the exact same producers of one of my favorite NES shoot 'em up games which is Gun Neck. But Star Voyager is a lot of the same of what you would have seen in the first two shooting games. It's coming from that first person perspective, except this time you're in space. I didn't find it overly enjoyable, but I will tell you, I thought it was pretty cool the way that the space moved in the background. So graphically for this kind of game, I thought they did a pretty good job. And last but not least for the games from Paul was Al Unser's Turbo Racing. And you know what? This actually is a pretty decent game. Like, I'm not a big racing game person, but I plug this in. The graphics are really good. The music's good. It looks like you can save your game. Alan's Turbo Racing is basically an interesting racing game for the system, and I do like the save feature so you can save your stats. Next up is actually a very hard game to find on the Nintendo Entertainment System. And I'm going to be honest with you, if I wasn't a collector, I probably never would have picked it up because it is absolutely no fun to play without a certain attachment, and that is stack up on the NES. That's right. So stack up while being an extremely hard to find or rarish type game isn't the type of game I would advise anybody to go out and pick up unless you were going to pick it up for trade-in value or you actually did have a Rob the Robot and wanted to play and all the necessary attachments. But as you can see from the gameplay, the game itself, there's not a whole lot to it and there's not much fun. It's one that's definitely cool to have, but I can't imagine seeing myself play it unless I pick up a Rob and the attachments later on down the line. Now here's a game I'm thrilled, thrilled to finally have in my collection because it's so much fun and I love playing it. Rockin' Cats. 
Rocking Cats is an early Atlas game for the NES, and it's a side-scrolling platformer with some really cool elements. Like, the music is really good. It does this hyper-type jazz theme. Graphics, the, the background graphics aren't so great, but the character design is fantastic. And the gameplay mechanic is really cool. You use this kind of, like, shootout, jokey fist, but it also has an element to it, all kind of like Bionic Commando, where you can latch onto things, spin your character around, use it as a pogo stick. Just a really fun game to play. Rockin' Cats gets very high praise from me. Well, I kind of alluded to it a little earlier on that I picked up a Grail game. Now this might not be a Grail game for some, but for me, this was the top of my list. Like, I don't ever expect to find a copy of, you know, Stadium Events in box. And I don't ever expect to find one of the Nintendo World Championships, specifically because I'm here in Canada and that was more of a US thing. But of the licensed games, this was probably the highest on my list of games I wanted to get. If you follow me on Facebook and Twitter, you already know, but if you didn't, I finally found a copy of Little Samson. Little Samson is a very expensive game that gets a lot of praise, and the praise is rightfully so. I will tell you that I played this game on emulation before I got it, and I didn't really know how to play it, and I wasn't that impressed with it, but once I actually got the physical copy and really, really applied myself to it, I just fell in love with the game. On top of it having that cool side-scrolling platformer type Mega Man type feel, it also has this really cool element where you can latch onto the walls and climb everywhere, plus you can choose between four characters. Overall, Little Samson is a fantastic game and deserves all the praise it gets. If you can find a copy for a good price, I advise you definitely to pick it up. But the prices on these are actually rising. Last time I checked here on ebay.ca, this game's up around $800, if not more, loose. That's crazy. <laughs> I didn't pay that for it, but I didn't get this cheap either. But anyways, very excited to finally have Little Samson in my collection. So anyways guys, that means I've hit another milestone with my NES collection. Little Samson was my 550th NES game. According to Nintendo Age, I'm about 76% done my collection. Just an unbelievable journey so far. I've had so much fun collecting these games, playing them, getting to experience new games, and falling in love with new games that I didn't get to play when I was a kid. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this, and as long as you enjoy watching, I'll keep making the videos and keep continuing on my quest to complete my NES collection. Anyways guys, thank you very much for watching. This is Michael B. the Game Genie, and I'll talk to you next time. Okay, so I can only choose one. Uh, this one. He chose poorly.